Hey guys, my name is Steve, this is Sahran's Corner, welcome back to my channel and today I'm introducing the Cozy Corner. So what is the Cozy Corner? The Cozy Corner is just a space for me to talk about recent books, um, current reads and any other miscellaneous things on my channel. Because I'm no longer doing kind of like TBRs, wrap ups anymore, um, I just needed a different way to talk about books and this is where i'm doing it and also um sometimes i want to talk about like other things on my channel so i will be doing that kind of stuff here if it's just like university stuff like i just need to rant about it or if it's like films because um if i'm not reading i'm usually watching films and i would love to talk more about films on my channel um even if it's in this small little way so yeah that is the cozy corner let's get into my recent reads so the first book i'm going to be talking about i'm not going to talk about for too long because i did a whole entire review on it and that is dear saint fioran by akrete and Mezzi. um it's a black spirit memoir and it's phenomenal absolutely magical read so the topics this book talks about um we talk about gods we'll talk about humans spirituality religion identity we got a whole conversation going in this book and i absolutely adored it um akrete and Mezzi, is basically exploring their identity through this book and explaining their identity in this book and it really changed my point of view on a lot of different things but if you want to know about more of my thoughts i have my review and it's basically just me gushing about this book for 10 minutes um but yeah if you haven't picked up this book already you should definitely pick it up it's a phenomenal read the next book i'm going to talk about i listened to on script so i don't have it physically on me and that's core baby by uh morgan jenkins i believe um i should have really um looked up her name again but yeah more, um this is a magical realism set in america we are following this black um family and it's just full of like women essentially and they all have coal on them which is like some extra kind of skin thing that has magical abilities and they can cut off their coal and give it to people and it'll help heal them in like many different ways and this story basically um is set off with um their family refusing to give call to a black pregnant woman who has had traumatic pregnancies in the past um they refuse to give a, the call to her she loses the baby and that kind of moment really triggers a lot of different things going on so primarily in the story we are following this call family who cuts up cuts off part of their body and sells it usually to wealthy white families and then we're following the other family who was affected by the refusal of the call um this book takes place in like the 80s as well i, I think it's the 80s like 80s all the way up until present day it's like a 40 um year time span i didn't really get the memo <laughs> the memo on that like i was reading it and i was kind of like confused about when it was taking place so this book was fine it was a very fine read um good writing um but the thing that um, the characters weren't really interesting to me um and this is a character driven book i would say so you think that it would be the characters that's compelling me to keep on reading well really it was kind of like the plot and the premise um i just wasn't invested in any of the characters um not that they weren't like likable they were just kind of there and i didn't feel any emotional connections to them the person i felt the most emotional connection to was the first pregnant lady and she kind of appears at the beginning of the book and she never really comes back it was her event and her tragedy which was the heart of this book more so than the other event that happens i won't spoil it but um yeah i don't know i just would i wasn't invested in any of the characters really and it kind of made the book fall flat for me also i think i wanted i would have wanted more commentary like i'm not saying that social commentary is like necessary really but like it, it was introduced in the book so i would hope that it's you know it's woven in a bit more like if you're going to say something say it with your chest you know what i mean i feel like it uh, more could have been said about what was going on um, more could have been explored. So the next book I'm going to talk about in my recent reads is Nikki May's Wahala. So we're following like three friends essentially and they're all mixed race with Nigerian and English and they're all supposed to be like this tight friendship group but they're kind of really not and um, one day this young woman comes into their lives and it seems like she's trying to improve their lives while really she is destroying and ruining their lives. 
Um, so this book, um, it, it was fine. It was a bit boring. It was a bit predictable. Um, like, you know what I mean? It wasn't like the worst read ever, but also was a bit tedious. Um, the characters were just not likable. Not to say that you need likable characters for story to be good. Um, I'm saying that because they were unlikable, but they weren't like compelling unlikable. It's like, okay, if your unlikable characters are not going to be compelling, at least make the story compelling. It's like the story was not compelling. Um, it felt very dramery dramery in the sense of i'm just following this like the drama of friendships and it's like it felt very tedious it felt very shallow as well um and predictable i just didn't understand why fair like why women in like their 30s were, were, act were acting like this it just felt very juvenile um i kind of guessed a lot of the things that was going to happen it's like okay so this young woman comes in and she's basically like going to destroy their lives and she does it in the most like predictable way like nothing was just like surprising it was like oh yeah she's going to do that and that's going to happen and that's going to happen and uh, yeah mm, i just wasn't feeling it also um the unlikable characters was even like oh they were like bitchy which they were but it's more in the sense of one of them is basically like a racist like i will say one of the characters is like a racist another character is anti-black and then you have the third character who's friends with a person who's anti-black and racist so i don't yeah. <laughs> i'm not trying to say that you can't have any characters who doesn't question or challenge their blackness but it's more of a sense of i don't know why like this was like what what was the point what's the narrative point why are you trying to talk about it felt very shallow if i'm going to read that I'm, I'm 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 reading on to see what the point is what you're trying to say is someone going to tell her to stop being a racist or are you or is something gonna happen or what's going on or what do you want to say it was kind of like oh she was a racist and like everyone was fine with that like i don't know bit odd bit odd um um again it was just fine if you want a thriller don't really read this book if you want a mystery don't really read this book if you want a quick coffee shop read you can probably read this book it's more so for that kind of read um i'm surprised it's getting a tv series because you'd think a tv series like would rely on tension and suspense but um which is not in this book but anyway i'm glad i read it i think just so i understand what everyone's trying to say but I also don't understand why anyone was trying to say about this book. So yeah, I read it. <laughs> what are my current reads? What am I going to currently be reading at the moment? So I have two books. Both of them are pretty short. So firstly, I have an arc of Cameron Battle and the Hidden Kingdoms by Jam Jamar J. Perry. Um, I was randomly sent this. Like I must be on Bloomsbury's mailing list somehow. Like I'm kind of wondering how that happened. But anyway. Yeah, we sent this book. It's a middle grade fantasy, portal fantasy. So we're following Cameron, who has a book to this hidden kingdom in Nigeria, Chidani. We're thinking Wakanda-esque here. And um, yeah, he basically goes into this kingdom with his two friends and there's problems in this kingdom. That's basically the setup. Like, I'm not very much, like, into this book. I'm, like, I'm, like, 69 pages into this book. So not a lot, of, not a lot has happened or stuff's happened but the story feels like it hasn't like kicked off yet so i'm kind of waiting for that to happen but other than that um it's pretty fine feels very surface at the moment but again i'm only 69 pages in but i am hoping that characters become a bit more fleshed out the plot becomes a bit more unique i read middle grade because i like the kind of innocent wonder that younger children have and i really enjoy that like i'm really good and i started reading again and i'm smiling because like oh this is just such a you know wondrous kind of whimsical feeling that i get while reading middle grade fantasy also reading i am not your baby mother why it's like to be a black british mother by candice braithwaite so this book is basically about black british motherhood societal expectations pressures challenges um i'm not too far into this one either i'm like too i'm on page 77 and this book is like over 200 pages so i should be finishing off this really quickly yeah it's about black motherhood um motherhood is not in the near future for me um so do you know what i mean like i don't know um but i don't feel like that um kind of takes away from what the book is doing or the information i'm getting from this book of course like i already i already know some of the things that 
Candy Springfield is talking about just because like I have a black mom I have aunties I have do you know what I mean like so I kind of know what she's talking about but I also really enjoy her perspective of motherhood and of like pregnancy and it's very familiar it's, it feels like an auntie could be talking about this book with me like it just feels like it's that kind of book so I really enjoy the writing style and um I'm looking forward to what else she's going to talk about when it comes to black British motherhood I think we if you don't know the statistic um about I think it's like three times as many black women die in childbirth compared to white women um so I'm pretty sure that is going to be touched upon in this book as well yeah another book came out of hers last year yeah I think it was about like sisterhood I feel like stuff like that and then she has another book coming out so she's kind of on a roll here um and she has a tiktok and her tiktok's really good so yeah i'm reading this currently so those have been my recent reads and my current reads what my next reads are going to be um i'm not quite sure i'm pretty much a mood reader right now like there's no saving me <laughs> when it comes to a tbr but i am feeling a fantasy i'm finding that i'm needing to genre shift with every book i read i can't just read like back-to-back -back literary fiction or back-to-back non-fiction i'm needing to change up that's why we have like kind of different genres going on in this video um but yeah i'm feeling like an adult fantasy i want to be in a fantastical world i want to be introduced to new things and you know maybe follow a hero on his ascent to greatness or his descent to madness i want to really just be in that kind of story at the moment so yeah right now we're having a good reading month i'm very happy about that like we're on a good we're on a good roll we're on a good roll let's let's keep it going while i'm in university please okay so we have a bit of time at the end time meaning like i'm not completely exhausted by <laughs> talking about other books um so i want to talk about films and as i said at the start of this video films are like a part of what i do as well like i don't just read like i know some people like reading is like their main hobby but for me like i really enjoy watching films um so i wanted to talk about some films i've been watching recently at the moment so i am following award season i know that award season is like riddled with systematic issues and like, i understand that completely but i really follow award season just to be in the conversation and it, i enjoy the the races people have and people having their favorites who they want to win and just the discussions about films i absolutely enjoy that so that's why i follow award season so my favorite films from this award season um recently have been tick tick boom i'm a sucker for a musical guys like, i am an absolute sucker for a musical tick tick boom is amazing um that soundtrack is single-handedly making show tunes my top genre on spotify like it's i'm um, I've, I'm giving up on um, making any other genre my top genre like it's going to be show tunes but other than Tick Tick Boom I'm not really rooting for any film like that like I'm not really over like hyped about anything else I really enjoyed Spencer and Kristen Stewart portrayal of Princess Diana it was a unique portrayal while also being familiar in certain aspects I recently watched Bean Ricardo's um if you didn't like trial of the chicago 7 i don't think this is going to be the film to win you over with aaron sorkin being a director it was fine let's leave it at that but yeah i've watched like a lot of the main award season contenders except for licorice pizza west side story and belfast those are like the three big ones i haven't watched but i still need to watch recently i watched the tragedy of macbeth with denzel washington denzel doing shakespeare yes it was amazing and also cinematography and production design were stunning i was watching it i was like um, it's like i'm watching a painting like a series of paintings it was just so um beautiful the cinematography was just absolutely gorgeous it's black and white as well and just enhances the whole intensity and intimacy of the play and then the next recent film I watched as well was King Richard with Will Smith. Absolutely crowd pleaser. And it made me really root for Be Alive um, for original song, for best original song for the Oscars. I really want that to win over No Time to Die by Billie Eilish. Like, I don't know. It, no Time to Die is not giving what Skyfall was giving. And I feel like if you're not going to reach those heights, I don't think you deserve to win the original song animated i still need to watch a lot of animated ones i've, I've watched encanto loved encanto i watched mitchell's best of the machines such a surprisingly joyous film i absolutely love that movie um and i watched raya and the lost dragon 
um i didn't like that i'm so sorry guys i didn't really like it um i have a number of problems with it but um the animation was stunning but also i don't know why the last dragon i can't remember her name now like looked like that i didn't like that character design and she's like in 70 percent of the movie so it's slightly distracting i still need to watch Belle um which is like oh my god it looks so beautiful but i need i need to watch bell and i need to watch flea and i need to watch flea so those are the animated ones that are on my radar so other than awards films i have just been kind of re-watching eternals since it came on disney plus i absolutely love the eternals um i didn't watch it two times in the cinema like i usually watch a marvel movie two times in a cinema because the first time i'm just like oh my god this is a new marvel film um and then the second time I can actually like follow plot and character arcs. Um, but I only watched it once because COVID. I'm pretty sure COVID, something was happening with COVID. So I didn't want to risk it. So right now I've been like rewatching it, rewatching it. And I'm liking it more and more each time I watch it. I understand Chloe Zhao's um, vision and what she was trying to get at. It still has its flaws. But I think this movie did what I needed to do in a sense that I subbed the characters. And it also made me excited to see where the story was going to next so that's how it's been movie wise i'm not really like a tv show watcher guys like i don't i'm too impatient with tv show unless like it's a stellar tv show like um i may destroy you like and even then like i watched like the first four episodes and i took like a couple of months breaks and like then watched other episodes so i'm not really a tv show watcher yes i still need to watch the book of boba fett um i yeah i do like star wars guys i know i know but I, I I need to watch the book of Boba Fett. I know a lot of people have been not liking it, but the people who have not been liking it are the people that I don't really drive with anyway in that Star Wars community. So I think I actually will enjoy it. But um, I think I'm going to wait until all the episodes are out and then just binge it. Like I don't think I feel like I'll just binge it when all the episodes are out. But yeah, that was this cozy corner, guys. Um. You know what I mean? It is partly bookish, partly non-bookish. Please let me know down below what recent books you've been reading, what current books you're reading, what future books you're thinking of reading. If you're following awards season, please let me know um, what film you're rooting for. For me, I'm rooting for Tick, Tick, Boom, but I think it's only going to get one nomination at this point, which is um, Best Actor. It might get sound and editing for those on locks. But yeah, please let me know down below, and I'll see you guys soon in another video soon. Bye!